So let's begin on section one of AZ900, Azure Fundamentals. In this section, we'll cover the benefits and considerations of using cloud services, describe the differences between the categories of cloud services, and finally describe the differences between the different types of cloud computing. So what is cloud computing? Cloud computing is a model for enabling on-demand access to a shared pool of configurable computing resources, such as servers, network, storage, applications, and services. Cloud computing provides ubiquitous, convenient, and on-demand network access. Using cloud computing, you can rapidly provision and release applications or systems with minimal management effort or service provider interaction. It's important to take a look at the NIST, or National Institute of Standards and Technology, definition of cloud computing as well. So for decades now, we've operated in a traditional data center model where companies would own or operate their own data centers or run servers on premises. This model has been good, but there are some benefits that cloud computing can provide over the traditional data center model or the on-premises model. High availability refers to systems that are durable and likely to operate continuously without failure for a long time. If you're operating an application or a system, you want it to be highly available. Scalability is the property of a system to handle a growing amount of work by adding resources to the system. If my application has been architected for scalability, as soon as I see a large amount of demand, the system will scale up or scale out to address that demand. Global reach refers to the ability to increase the access between an organization and its current and potential customers, regardless of where they are. So if my company is based in the United States, but it has offices and customers in many countries worldwide, I can leverage the global reach capabilities of the cloud to bring the services and data closer to the users instead of them all having to connect to my services in the United States. Agility is the ability to move quickly and easily. Throughout the years, I've had customers in many, many different industries. Businesses and organizations need to be able to rapidly adapt to swings in their business model or to changes in the market. The cloud and its services provide the ability to rapidly pivot. Disaster recovery is the set of policies, tools, and procedures to enable the recovery or continuation of vital technology infrastructure and systems following a natural or human-induced disaster. Fault tolerance is the way in which a system responds to a hardware or software failure. As you architect, design, and deploy systems to run in the cloud, you want to ensure that they incorporate fault tolerance. Why is that important? Trust. If you visit your bank's website, for example, and receive a message that the login capabilities are down for maintenance, but to check back later, you have trust that proper precautions have been put in place and that faults have been handled properly. If you visit your bank's website and it doesn't load or shows strange characters or imagery, you have much less trust that your money is being handled properly and that you might lose that trust. Elasticity is the ability of a system to resume its normal shape after being stretched or compressed. Stretchiness. When your system or application receives high amounts of demand, you want it to scale out or scale up to accommodate that demand. But when that demand no longer exists, you want that system to scale back or scale down so that you're not paying for resources that aren't being used. That is elasticity. Latency is the delay from input into a system to its desired outcome. For an end user, for example, it's the amount of time between when they click on a link and when a website loads. Predictive cost considerations and models are when you take two or even millions of factors to identify combinations of what your cost will be. The major benefit is that using predictive costing, you can determine what your cost will be in the future based upon current and prior consumption. Lastly, security is the state of being free from danger or threat. When we look at the cloud, it's also important to understand the accounting concepts of CapEx, or capital expenditures, and OpEx, or operational expenditures. CapEx is when a company or organization spends money on physical infrastructure, hardware, components, and such, and then deducts the investment on its tax bill over time. There's a huge upfront investment needed. OpEx is when a company or organization spends money or on infrastructure, services, or products only when they're needed. They're billed right away, and the company is able to deduct the entire expense from its tax bill in the same year. There are three primary models that cloud service providers operate in. The first is the public cloud model, where any organization can leverage the capabilities of the cloud as it's open to the public. There's no money expended up front, and apps and services can be immediately provisioned or deprovisioned. Organizations only pay for what they use. The next is the private cloud model, where infrastructure, buildings, hardware, and such 
have to be purchased well in advance. The organization has complete control over the resources and security, but that can also cause additional operational expenses. Organizations are 100% responsible for hardware maintenance and updates. This is the private data center model. The last is the hybrid cloud model, where an organization may run some applications in their data center, may run some on premises, and then run some in Azure. This provides the most flexibility, especially when there's proprietary hardware needs to be met, security, compliance, or legal requirements. Cloud service providers operate using a consumption-based model. The consumption-based model brings with it many benefits, including no upfront costs, no need to purchase and manage costly infrastructure that they may or may not use to its fullest, the ability to pay for additional resources when they're needed, and the ability to stop paying for resources that are no longer needed. This slide shows the shared responsibility model for leveraging private and public clouds. There's a lot going on in this slide, so let me try to simplify it. In a private cloud or an on-premises deployment, you, as the organization, are responsible for managing all aspects of the data center, from storage, networking, compute, virtual machines, operating systems, application runtimes, applications, and data and access. When you use, utilize a public cloud using an infrastructure as a service model, the cloud service provider manages the storage, networking, and compute, and you're left to manage everything else. When you utilize a public cloud using platform as a service, the cloud service provider manages even more, while you're left to only manage the applications, data, and access. Finally, when you utilize a public cloud using software as a service, the cloud service provider manages everything but data and access, which is left to you. So let's dig into those three models. IaaS, or Infrastructure as a Service, is the most flexible cloud service model. It allows you to configure and manage the hardware specific for your application. It also carries with it the administrative burden of having to update and patch any virtual machines that you use. PaaS, or Platform as a Service, allows you to focus on application development and consumes the services that the cloud service provider has deployed. The cloud service provider then manages the underlying platform, updates, and security patches. SaaS, or Software as a Service, provides pay-as-you-go pricing for access to applications. You only pay for the software that you use in the subscription. If users join your organization, you pay more. If they leave, you pay less. That's the end of section one, describing cloud concepts. Some key takeaways. Microsoft offers public, private, and hybrid cloud models that you can leverage for your own needs. There are numerous benefits that Azure Cloud offers, such as high availability, elasticity, scalability, and pay-as-you-go. There are several cloud service models, such as IaaS, PaaS, SaaS, and serverless. You can use one or more of the models based upon the needs of your system that you need to build. Lastly, based upon the cloud service model you use, there are different responsibilities that are shared between you as the consumer and the cloud service provider. Next up is section two, describing Azure Core services.